It is Thursday, June 2nd. This is your 10 a.m. tropical update. I'm meteorologist Pate Malone. We continue to follow a couple of things in the tropics, but really one is our only interest uh, as of this morning. Notice your two areas there. The yellow spot you see there off towards uh, the northeast side of Bahamas. That's not going to do anything, but here's the spot we're watching our what we're calling Invest 91. And remember, Invest just simply means it's an investigative area that the National Hurricane Center is tracking. At this point, it is still a broad low pressure. You can see the broad spin of it there, but our invest just means that um, yes, we're running models on it and we do expect this to organize more. You can see a big burst of storms. These white and kind of pink colors you see there, those are the cloud tops measuring the temperature and those are cold, cold cloud tops, which tells us they're very high and we're continuing to see these burst of storms, which tells us this is trying to become a depression. It could certainly do it at some point today. We just have to wait for the circulation to become less broad and closed off. So right now it's not really a closed off uh, tight circulation, but once that happens, happens if the winds are there we will definitely have our tropical depression one or if the winds are strong enough maybe tropical storm alex so we'll be watching this through today the hurricane hunters are expected to fly out to this and investigate it and get the wind measurements um, actual measurements of what's going on but we definitely have a developing tropical system here it's just the big question on when does it become that depression later this morning, later this afternoon, maybe tonight or even into tomorrow? It's not really moving that fast right now. It's pretty much stationary, but it does have some slow, slow movement to it, and it'll remain moving pretty slow through today. By tonight, it'll lift to the northeast, and then by late tonight and early tomorrow morning, South Florida will start to feel some impacts from what may be Tropical Depression 1, maybe Tropical Storm Alex, or maybe it's still not completely organized at that point. But regardless, it will start to bring some heavy rains to South Florida by tomorrow morning. That is Friday morning, June 3rd. Here's what precision cast is showing. This is some of our high resolution modeling doing a pretty good job right now. It is fighting a lot of wind shear and the models are showing that notice the center of circulation somewhere in here near Cancun and Cozumel, but notice where all the heavy rain is to the east of Cancun and the Yucatan Peninsula. That's because we've got shear blowing in on it from the west here. The shear is coming in like this, blowing all those storms off on the eastern side of that circulation. So that's why it really hasn't come together very quickly. It's still fighting that wind shear, and it'll likely fight the wind shear uh, throughout its entire journey, which should keep it lopsided. Here we go into tonight and tomorrow morning, Friday morning. Notice early starting to see some of those showers approach Key West and South Florida. They will continue to spread up through uh, South Florida as we go through the day on Friday. So Friday will likely be one of the rainier of the days, and then even into Friday night, still some heavy rainfall around. Saturday, still probably some rain, but things will begin to improve. And notice this is for South Florida. There's Fort Myers, there's Miami, there's Key West. Here's the Bahamas, but Tampa and Orlando may miss most, if not all of the heavy rainfall from what is our developing tropical system. So the main threat with this, with it fighting wind shear and dry air is gonna be heavy rain. You don't necessarily need a strong storm to get flooding rain. And some of the you know worst storms that cause flooding are from tropical storms and tropical depression. So widespread five to seven inches, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's over eight inches in a few spots here through Friday night into Saturday morning. So this is where the flooding threat's highest. Notice Orlando, Tampa might not see much rain at all, and then especially uh, dry up in the Panhandle and up into northern parts of the peninsula. So this is going to be a South Florida system for sure. And you know, we always talk about the loop current here. The loop current is that fetch of warm hot water that comes up through the Caribbean, goes into the Gulf of Mexico and makes a loop. And this is what a lot of people tend to focus on. But here's the thing, you need a lot more to get a tropical system to organize and get strong more than just hot temperatures. Now they're there. Where this thing is going is going to be running over temperatures that are in the 80s, nearly 90 degrees in a few spots, but that's not enough. You need a lot more than just hot water temperatures. And in this case, we don't have completely moist environment and we don't have lack of wind shear. We've got wind shear, we've got some dry air in the Gulf of Mexico, which is gonna cap this thing off and limit it from growing too strong. Now, it could very reasonably become a tropical storm, but beyond that, not very likely because this trough digging down, that's what's pulling it north and east, but it's also imparting wind shear. So the center of circulation would be right in here in this model run, but notice 
all the moisture is on the east side. Look at all this dry air trying to get up into the core and the vortex of this thing. That will keep it from intensifying. The storms will be intermittent, which means it's not going to rapidly strengthen if the storms are on and off, on and off. So to get a rapidly intensifying or even a strengthening storm into a hurricane, you need storms constantly firing around a center of low pressure. And whenever you've got dry air coming in, that makes those or that allows those storms to die out and then fizzle back up, a fizzle and then go back up and up and down, up and down. So that's why we're not anticipating this to grow into much more than maybe a tropical storm. And once again, it might not be more than a tropical depression. Either way, rain is the main concern. So for your ingredients, you got the deep warm water in the Gulf. Guess what? It's always there, but you got to have uh, low wind shear. We cannot check that box. We've also got dry air, so we cannot check that box either. So overall, we're not anticipating this to be a big hurricane, but it is June. Typically, these are sloppy, lopsided systems that dump a heavy rainfall, and that looks to be the case with this one as well for South Florida. First name on the list is Alex, so we will see if we get Alex uh, for today or maybe going into tomorrow. Just one of those things to see how it evolves. Once again, the hurricane hunters are going to fly out in there later on today, and hopefully they fly out and give us some uh, measurements on what exactly happening and maybe we have tropical depression one later today maybe we have tropical storm alex we will wait and see but of course you can always follow us here for more updates on the tropics we will have a couple of more later on today for the time being i'm meteorologist peyton malone thanks for joining us